Thanks for having me here today. So my name is Cassandra. I'm a digital navigator at CMAC, which is based in South Philly. Um, and I'm going to be sharing my experience on the ground with ACP enrollments. And um, I've been doing this for about two years now when it was the emergency broadband benefit EBB. So I hope that um, what I say will be helpful to you guys today. So some background about CMAC, we're a nonprofit based in South Philly, and um, we serve immigrants and refugees specifically, but we also help other people in the Philadelphia community. Um, so one of the things that we focus on at CMAC is language access and collaborating with key community members. So CMAC is a social services agency. So as a digital navigator, I work really closely with case managers, community workers, and bilingual counseling assistance. So I have connections to people in schools, case managers, and other CBOs. And I wanted to highlight that because I think that's why um, our ACP enrollment assistance is so strong. Um, so moving on a little bit, we are CMAC, as I mentioned, but there are other digital navigator orgs in Philadelphia. So there's Beyond Literacy and Drexel. And I wanted to share these contact information just so that you have it. Um, this is also on the city website, but if you want to refer anyone um, for ACP assistance, feel free to contact the one that makes sense for you or the community member who needs help. So as Ashley mentioned, um, more information on the ACP program. It's a $30 benefit off of their internet or data service. And to highlight who's eligible again, anyone who receives public benefits like SNAP, Medicaid, or WIC are eligible. Anyone in the school district of Philadelphia who receive free and reduced lunch um, or a charter school who is a CEP school. Anyone who receives Pell Grants, so these are college students. You do have to be over 18 to use ACP, however. Um, but if you're like 19, you could use ACP. And I also included people who are 200% at or below the federal poverty guidelines. So this may be someone, an adult who doesn't have a child in the school district, so they wouldn't qualify through their child. And they also don't have public benefits. But if they're 200% at or below the federal poverty guidelines, they could submit their pay stubs um, and see if they're eligible for ACP to use this $30 discount off of their internet service. And I wanted to include a visual below here, um, specifically about the transition from PHL Connected to Internet Essentials to ACP. So currently families have PHL Connected for $0. However, as Ashley mentioned, July 31st, that will be ending, and then families will be responsible for the bill, which is $9.95. However, if they want to maintain the free service, they can apply for ACP to make it free again. And I think this visual is helpful for a lot of families that I give this presentation to. Some families will say, um, I have the 995 internet. Can I get ACP? Yes, they can. That just means that they didn't have PHL connected it, um, in the beginning. But as long as they're eligible for ACP, they could use it on their internet service. OK, so I will talk very briefly about the ACP process. I have a Loom video that's 20 minutes long that I recorded. We'll send a link after this um, webinar, but I just wanted to talk briefly about the steps you can expect when you're helping someone sign up or helping yourself sign up. Um, so there are three main steps um, at a glance. So the first step is the preparation step. You want to gather all your documents um, to apply for ACP. You don't need to submit these documents. However, um, you may be asked. So. Um, I think in March, uh, the ACP process was revamped to be simplified. So in the beginning, they ask you for your social security number, even though that's not required. However, in Pennsylvania, um, I think people, there's data sharing between um, the public benefits and, and ACP eligibility. So if you give them your social security number, you may not have to upload your eligibility letter later. And that just makes the process a lot easier. You could get qualified within like five minutes and 
you know, that's if you have a social security number. But if you don't have one, that's okay. Um, so in the context of school, um, the PHL Connected Transition, there are three documents you need mainly. It would be the government ID of the account holder for the internet service, the government ID of one student, and an eligibility letter from the school. And this here, you know, as Ashley mentioned, the letters don't always get approved, even though it has everything you need, like the letterhead from the school, the name of the student, the address, the school name. Um, sometimes it's the the website is complicated, but I've had to help people, you know, submit the documents three times and then the same document would be approved. So if you get frustrated because of the documents not getting accepted, just keep trying with the same document. Um, that's, you know, that helps it. Families do get approved after the third try for some reason. <laughs> um, so that's the first step. You want to gather all your documents. Step two is important. You want to submit information to affordableconnectivity.gov to get approved for ACP. And approved is underlined because um, there are two, two steps to this. First, you get approved, and then you need to utilize it. Some people don't know that after they're approved, they have to contact their internet service provider to apply the approved application ID number. And because they don't um, call the internet service provider to apply the approved application ID number, they're never utilizing ACP and then they have a bill that they weren't expecting. And as I mentioned, you can watch this long video here if you wanna go through all the steps, but uh, when in doubt, everything must match, including the name, that you type in onto the Affordable Connectivity uh, website, um, the spelling, abbreviations, emails, everything has to match. And finally, in step three, you're finally approved and now you can utilize the ACP credit. So you can just call the internet service provider if they have an ACP department, which, intern or which Xfinity does, Comcast does, um, or you could call if you're a Verizon customer, their general customer service line, and I've included those numbers at the end. Um, this step, no one really talks about how do you maintain ACP once you have it on your internet. Um, and I like to tell people this information because sometimes it could take quite a while to get the ACP approved on their account, and then suddenly it's removed and they don't know why. So to go over how to maintain your ACP, um, as a reminder, you can only have one ACP benefit per household, not per person. So even if two people in the household are qualified for public benefits or there's two children in the school, you can't combine the benefits to get 60 or whatever. It's only $30 off of your internet service. Um, and the second one is important. Your household can use ACP for phone, or in service, but not both. And this gets people in sticky situations because they will have ACP on their internet service, but one day they're walking down the street and there are people tabling outside with tablets or phones and they say, hey, get this free device, it's free. Um, but they don't know that it's free through ACP. Um, it's using the ACP credit. And because you can only use ACP for one service, not two, and per household, not per person, it will be removed from your internet service and then you'll be responsible for the bill. And of course, the person giving the phone or tablet doesn't tell you that. So you're kind of unaware of what's going on and then all of a sudden your internet service is disconnected um, if you don't check your email. They, they will probably email you that you're, you've been de-enrolled from ACP. But if someone doesn't check their email and suddenly they don't have internet service, but they received a free phone um, like two months ago, then it's because of the phone that they no longer have ACP on their internet. Um, three and four, pretty self-explanatory. If you move, you'll have to reapply for ACP. And that process is really easy. It's the same as applying the first time, except with your new address. And after a year, you'll have to renew for ACP, renew your ACP eligibility. Um, and I believe the internet service provider will contact you about renewing. And it's the same as signing up the first time as well. And number five just highlights um, the second point, which is be careful accepting free devices from unknown third parties. 
you know, sometimes the school district will have laptops um, because it's their own inventory. It's not using ACP most of the time. I don't think so. Um, but if you ever want to be sure, if you or your client or a community member is walking outside and they're offered a free device, they could just ask, is this using ACP? And if it is, they could walk away and say that they already have the service. Um, so yes, if you're ever helping someone sign up for ACP, you should let them know how to maintain it because getting it is hard in the first place. It could be a challenge, especially um, going through the national verifier. Okay, I think this is the last part, how you can facilitate the ACP adoption process. So the first thing is building trust with um, whoever you're helping sign up for this. And how I've done it at CMAC is, you know, I am connected to their case manager. So their case managers are able to call off the program and say, yes, it's real. You can use this. Um, and then, you know, I'll help their case managers, help the client try to figure out which documents they need, how they qualify. So my recommendation is to start where you're at. If you work in a library, if you have like an after school program with students in it, just tell them about this service. Um, and then it's a really easy way for people to believe in ACP and use it um, right away. Um, another practical thing you can do is help them gather their documents. As someone who works with people internally in my organization and with all Philadelphians who call 211 or a hotline, I've noticed that it's kind of um, a longer process helping people who are just calling us like out of the blue because they don't have all of their documents in line. So if you can help them gather their documents uh, to sign up for the process, I think it'll be a lot easier and smoother for everyone. That way they could utilize the $30 credit as soon as possible. Um, another practical thing is help them create an Xfinity ID if they don't already have one um, or help them recover their account. And I'm talking a lot about Comcast here because um, PHL Connected is using Internet Essentials, but this is also true for Verizon, um, but if you create an Xfinity ID with them, they could uh, apply the approved application ID number from the National Verifier online. And um, the online application is a lot easier than calling the ACP Internet Essentials Department because sometimes things could be lost in translation. Um, they could miss here the way you spell your name. And because of that, you may be rejected for ACP in the third step when you have to utilize the ACP credit. Um, and of course, you could help them sign up when you're with them, or you could refer them to 211 so that they can be screened and assigned to the three digital navigator orgs that you saw in the beginning, which are CMAC, Beyond Literacy, and Drexel. Um, so there are a lot of different ways to help the people you're working with sign up. A lot of different means, so use them. Um, lastly, I'm happy to do an ACP workshop and enrollment session with you guys at your organization, so you can email me here. Um, last week, I went to Southwark, a school in Philadelphia, and there were a lot of parents there, and we already helped four people get new internet service, so uh, it's everything's working out pretty well. Um, here are the resources. You could, you don't have to write these down. We'll send these to you um, in the email, but um, there is the online application for Xfinity, or you could call the ACP department. And for Verizon, they have a general customer service number. If your client has Verizon, um, they could also use ACP. And if you don't see your internet service provider, my tip is to just type in the ISP's name and ACP to see if they participate. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can email me directly, or if you wanna have a workshop, you could also email me 